Welcome back to the Luton Town Let's Play series here on the channel and in this episode we're going to go forward five years and see how Luton are doing. We left them 10th in the Premier League after season two. Hopefully they're still going to be in the Premier League but there is a possibility with the AI being what it usually is like in Football Manager they may have just gone down a little bit. Now what I also want to do is we've made a note of five youngsters from our team Joe Johnson, who's an 18-year-old left-back that I gave a few game, games to and a little bit of experience in the first team. want to see how he's progressed in the game, along with four players that came through our youth academy who have some ability about them. You know, they're four- to five-star potential ability players. Football manager in their feature blogs was saying about how the AI squad planning and all that has improved and that there will be a lot less of this situation you have you've had in previous years where squads have like 30 to 35 role players dominating their squads so we're going to look into that to see whether that has been fixed and we're also going to look to see whether these youngsters that are mentioned whether they are being given the playing time to progress through to the game because by now even the 15-year-olds will now be 20. The 16-year-olds will be 21. Joe Johnson will be 23, something like that. So let's get into the video and let's see exactly how Luton Town are doing five years later. Okay, here we go then, folks. Now, before we go any further, please leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Hit the notification bell so you get alerted for when any new videos go up on the channel. We've got a new series, Bottoms Up, where we start in the Vanarama National League, either north or south. I say either because Random Number Generator will be choosing which league we go in and then it will be choosing which one of the 24 teams we will manage at the start of that series. So loads of stuff to come. That's going to be going out Monday to Friday, 6pm every day during the week. And we'll have the occasional upload on a weekend when we're going to do transfer specials and things like that. But let's get into this video and let's have a look for Luton Town. And it's going to be a bit of a giveaway there. We are in the championship. Wow. Okay, so I wonder how many years we've been in the championship for. Let's have a look at our history. And okay, so this was the first season we took over in 23-24 where we finished 16th with Luton. It was a very stressful season. Then the following season, we finished uh, 10th. That was a massive achievement. Top half finish with Luton Town. Then we had the next... So this is our first season away from the club, where we finished back in 16th again. Not too bad. But then look at that, 19th, second bottom. Two years after we left, they got relegated. But they did come up through the playoffs by looking at finishing third in the championship. And then last season they finished 18th and got relegated yet again. So let's have a look at the Premier League. English Premier Division. So as you can see, Arsenal are the most recent winners. But we'll go back to before we, from when we left. So this was their first season. This was their second season. So this is the first season from when we left. So Manchester City won the league that year. Uh, what were they, nine points ahead of Liverpool, then Arsenal in third, Newcastle in fourth, fifth Champions League place going to Aston Villa. So there's a glimpse into the future. Did that happen the previous season as well? Wow, OK, so six Champions League spots to English clubs that year. I'm assuming one of them must have won it that season. We'll have a look at that in a little bit. But yes, yeah, six Champions League spots. It doesn't carry on going down giving you more and more European places. But it did mean that seventh Manchester, I mean, six Champions League spots and Man United didn't get one of them. They got a Europa League spot. West Ham got the Champions League. Aston Villa in the Champions League in Football Manager in the end of the 2024-25 season. So this was their first season away. So five teams qualified. That's presumably the top four plus the one place for the coefficient ranking. Then Aston Villa got their second season in a row in the Champions League. Man United still in the Europa League. Tottenham in the Europa League. Chelsea in the Champions League. 
There was Luton finishing 16th back there. And there's that issue again. They're still not scoring enough goals. I had that issue in both my seasons there that we couldn't score enough goals. And in the second season, we managed to have a pretty good defensive record. I think it was something like fourth or fifth best defensive record in the Premier League. And obviously there, they're one of the worst defensive records. So not a good season for Luton Town there. Obviously, here is where Luton got relegated. They'd scored more goals, but 72 goals against. We'll go into the Luton team very shortly. In the Champions League, top five again went through. Arsenal, City, Liverpool, Chelsea, Man United. So Aston Villa missing out on the Champions League, but they were in the Europa League, along with Newcastle, who finished 11th. That's a low finish for Newcastle. And West Ham in the Conference League. Worth noting, Sunderland were in the Premier League this season. So that's a team from the lower division from the Championship that has not been in the league for quite a few years. Who was relegated or in there previously? Nothing, nothing unusual in that one. And then we get to this season, the third season, and obviously Luton are not in here now. They're in the Championship. Arsenal, Man City, Liverpool, Chelsea, Manchester United, starting to sound very familiar. Tottenham finishing sixth, Newcastle seventh, Brighton have well, Aston Villa. Aston Villa all the way down in 11th. Okay, so that's not been a good season for them by their own standards. Middlesbrough, this time getting relegated, along with Nottingham Forest and Leicester City. Then we get into the 2028 20, 29 season. Liverpool win the league this year. Arsenal second, Chelsea third, City fourth, Newcastle fifth. Manchester, so it must have been another English winner there for Man, Man United to have got a Champions League. Wouldn't it be funny if Man City won it and it got Manchester United a European place? Villa in the Europa League in seventh. Everton were in eighth. Brighton in ninth. Tottenham all the way down in tenth. That's a, and West Ham all the way down in thirteenth. That's a poor season. Luton back in the Premier League only for the one season. Scoring 39 goals again, kind of suffering there. Defence not particularly good. Third worst by the looks of it. Then we get into what is the current season, the 2029-2030 season. Arsenal winning it again. Manchester City, Liverpool, Chelsea getting the Champions. So only four Champions League places. OK, so that would suggest that the English clubs didn't get the coefficient ranking. Now, there was talk on the feature blogs that Football Manager did that leagues could change in their reputations and TV money could change and all this sort of stuff. Maybe that is a sign of the changes in the game where five years into the future, the Premier League and English football in general is starting to lose a bit of its appeal. It's not got that fifth coefficient place. Tottenham in the Europa League finishing fifth. Man United didn't get it for finishing sixth. Instead, it went to West Ham who must have won a cup competition. And I would assume Newcastle must have won a cup competition as well, finishing seventh. So if we have a look at the past winners, we were here for these two seasons. Arsenal won it then. They've won it three out of the last five seasons and runners-up in that one. They were third in the other two. So they've been top three, if not winning it, all the time, or for, for most of it. Man City, like I say, and Liverpool. I mean, Man City are always there as well. So, so Arsenal, Man City, Liverpool, you'd have to say, are the three teams that really seem to be dominating English football. If we have a look at the FA Cup, current holders West Ham. Let's have a look at the past winners of this. So Arsenal won it the two years we were there. They are pretty much FA Cup specialists at this point. Man United, Newcastle, Liverpool, Man City. West. OK, so after Arsenal's two wins there, it's a different winner every season. And then you look at the runners-up. Wolves runners-up, Palace, City runners-up two years in a row. Tottenham runners-up, Chelsea, West Ham. OK, so it's good for Wolves and Crystal Palace that they've been able to get in there. It's nice to see West Ham get an FA Cup win. If we have a look at the Carabao Cup, and have a look at the past winners in that. So Liverpool and Villa won it the first two seasons that we done. Then Arsenal won it that would have been their first League Cup win for many years. Then Aston Villa, then Liverpool, then Newcastle have won it two years in a row. They've done back-to-back -back Carabao Cup wins. Of course, down here in real life last season, they lost in the final to Manchester United. In 2028-29, they got their, their revenge in the final. 
by beating Manchester United. Leeds beaten finalists this season, West Ham, Arsenal, Chelsea, Man City, Fulham most recently. So let's have a look at the championship. Oh, where's it going to show us it? Championship. Skybet Championship, there you go. So what is also worth noting, we're going back and have a look at this part in a moment. So in the Skybet Championship, show me the league table, please. Thank you very much. So we go back a few years. So I don't need the first two seasons. So the season we left, Leicester, Palace and Sunderland went up. Sunderland, obviously in the playoffs. Watford, Blackpool and Bristol City went down. I mean, Watford going down, wow, into League One for Watford. Then the following season, Bournemouth, Middlesbrough, Forest won it. But it does seem a lot like the teams that go down are the teams that come back up. Whole Rotherham and Notts County. So Notts County obviously came up into the Championship. They've gone back down the following season. It'll be quite interesting to see how Wrexham fans feel about that, considering Notts County and Wrexham, I believe they came back into the Football League at the same time. So Notts County have obviously had a rise to fame over this, but there doesn't seem to be any sign of Wrexham just yet. Then we go into the following season, and Sheffield United, Palace and Luton. So yeah, there's Luton in third going up. Sheffield Wednesday, Bolton and Cholton all getting relegated, just at Peterborough in the Championship. They've, they seem to go up and down between League One and the Championship. Then if we go into the second to final season, I think, is this the first one where... Yeah, it is. So this is the first one where third has not actually won the playoffs. So fifth has won the playoffs with Nottingham Forest, Sunderland and Leicester going up. Huddersfield, Wigan and Portsmouth getting relegated. So Portsmouth getting up. Peterborough staying in the championship. That's important for them. Plymouth are in there as well. Were they in there last year, Plymouth? Yeah, the year before that. Are they just a championship team, Plymouth? And I think they're lower. Yeah, it would look that way. I've always got Plymouth down as being like a League One type club. Anyway, into the final season. Charlton Lincoln. Oh, and Peterborough rock bottom that season. I mean, they were a mile off, weren't they? Charlton and Lincoln, obviously, got Lincoln, Lincoln as well, I think, are usually like a League One team. And so Norwich, Sheffield United and Palace went with them. If we go back to the Premier League for a moment, just have a look at the overview. So the Premier League is still rated the number one league. Spain second, Italy third, Germany fourth, France fifth, then Portugal, uh, the Netherlands and Turkey. <clears throat> Sorry, just clear my frame. So we look into Skybet League One. Give me the table, please. So for the current season, we come to that in a moment. Let's go all the way back. So the first two seasons we were in there, Bolton, Derby and Wigan going up. Leighton Orient, Northampton, Stevenage and Cheltenham going down. Obviously, that was the first season we'd done the save, so there won't be too many anomalies in there. Blackpool, Reading and Peterborough going up in the second season with Cambridge, Exeter, Sutton and Carlisle going down. In the net, So this is the first season without us doing it, I believe. Yep. Sheffield Wednesday, Preston and Notts County going up. So that's where Notts County have gone up. And Burton, Morecambe, Chesterfield and Northampton relegated to League 2. Now, it is interesting to see Wrexham are in there as well. I know there's going to be someone very keen to know how Wrexham doing this save. Being a big fan of them in real life, of course. So then if we go to the following season, and Charlton, Bristol City and Portsmouth getting promoted, with Wickham, Port Vale, Fleetwood and Gillingham going down. And Wrexham finishing fourth, so we would have got to the playoffs. So if we just have a look at the playoffs for that season. So Portsmouth going through in the playoff semi-final on that one. Well, give us back the league table, please. And then we go to the next season. And Coventry, Hull and Wigan go up. Lincoln, obviously, and QPR getting beaten. 
Notts County have obviously come back down now as well. And Colchester, Chesterfield, Shrewsbury and Stockport getting relegated. And then we're going to the second to last season. QPR getting promoted along with Lincoln and Charlton. And Blackpool, Cambridge, Doncaster and Morecambe getting relegated. Watford and Millwall, Sheffield Wednesday still sort of hanging around League One as well. And then into the current season, Portsmouth, Notts County and Watford getting promoted. So Watford back into the Championship again, as are Notts County, who seem to be flitting. They seem to be the new Peterborough, up and down between the Championship and League One. While Wigan, Carlisle, Burton and Tranmere get relegated to League One. So we'll have a quick look at League Two as well. So the first season without us in the game, not that we matter to the lower leagues, but they're the teams that are promoted. Bourne Wood getting relegated along with Walsall. Then Cambridge, Colchester, Burton and Chesterfield going up. Gateshead and Harrogate going down. I do have a bit of an affiliation with Mansfield, family stuff and all that. Wickham, Morecambe, Crew, and Doncaster the following season getting promoted. And Stevenage and Gillingham down into the National League. Wow. Tranmere, Stockport, Carlisle and Chesterfield. Leighton Orient and Dagenham and Redbridge. Solid whole moors. Having a... Was that the first season? No, they've been in their previous season. No, they've been in their previous season as well, Solid whole moors. I'm not wrong in thinking they're usually a conference team, am I? They look like... Going to this game, they're, they're regulars in the league. No, they must have gone up that season. I don't see them in there that season. So, yeah, they've had a good few few years. Anyway, into the final season, Morecambe, Forest Green, Doncaster and Blackpool into League One. Northampton and Harrogate going down. Did I have the, I'm not going to go for all the National League stuff. No, I didn't have them loaded anyway. But, OK, so let's have a look at the Champions League. See if what English clubs have won that over the years have a look at the past winners so Real Madrid beat Barcelona Real Madrid beat Liverpool Man City beat so yeah there's an English winner there Man City beating Liverpool Paris Saint-Germain beating Arsenal Arsenal unable to pick up their Champions League win so was that the season where Man City would have won it and that then meant Man United qualified for the Champions League the following season Liverpool then winning it Beating Man, I mean, Man City have lost two in a row, once against Liverpool, once against Man City. So, yeah, Man City is still in and around all that. Real Madrid and Liverpool have great pedigree in this competition. In terms of the Europa League, Atletico Madrid beating Liverpool, Newcastle beating Atalanta, Wolfsburg beating Bayer Leverkusen, Leipzig beating Marseille, Milan beating Fenerbahce, Newcastle beating Inter and Villarreal beating Aston Villa. Aston Villa just missed out on the opportunity of winning themselves a European trophy. Now, we're going to the Conference League, and in theory, an English or Italian team should win this pretty much every year, in my opinion, the Conference League. So, West Ham, obviously, the pre so then we've had Lille beating Gent. So, no English team made the final there. The following season, Tottenham have won a European trophy. They beat Fiorentina. Bologna of Italy beating Bilbao. Lille winning it again, beating Chelsea. Vigo beat AGF. I mean, where are they from? From Denmark. Wow. Okay. I mean, I will admit to being quite surprised at that. AGF getting to the final. Then Brighton got to the final two years in a row. And they lost to Sevilla and Leipzig. So no one's actually dominating that as such. It's not. I mean, Lille were probably the only. Yeah, they are the only repeated winners. But that's quite interesting to see Lille getting some trophies and also to see a bright, uh, a Danish league coming through. Absolutely fascinated. Okay, so if we go back to Luton, and we will now have a look to see how Luton are doing. So their bank balance is still relatively healthy. They've got a value of 456. The debt is now down to 12 million. Their finances are okay. They have taken a slight knock on their reputation, but the training facilities are still 
okay. They're still not too bad. I'm, I'm still upset that I've not made it at least into the favoured personnel list here. Um, the end of the last episode, quite an emotional one with uh, Gary, Gary Stewart, Gary Sweet, Gary Stewart. He made that much of an impression on me, I forgot his name. But he should, he's not even, oh, have they had a takeover? They must have had a takeover. Because I'm pretty certain they were not, yeah, at the club since 2026. So they have had a takeover. Okay, that is fascinating. So looking at, they've now moved into their 19,500 all-seater stadium. That was built in 2027. So, yeah, that was when it was due to be built as well. Top corporate facilities. I mean, back when they were at Kenilworth Road, they had no um, no cor corporate stuff in there you know when you get a support profile it says how much is hardcore and family and all that corporate was zero good training facilities great youth facilities okay so that could be quite interesting about a young players they've got great youth facilities maybe them young players have come through adequate academy coaching and average youth recruitment okay so let's have a look so the overview we've already seen let's have a look at the managers Oh, wow. Okay. So, Rob Edwards left the role here. We took over here for one year and 321 days. Then, after us, Paul Warren came in. Who's Paul Warren? I've never even heard of him. So, looking at his history, he's been a manager at Rotherham and Derby. So, he spent five years at Rotherham, three years at Derby, came to Luton for less than a year, and then he went to Peterborough for a year and he's now at Portsmouth for a year. So he's obviously not great, Paul Warren, needless to say. So, yeah, Paul Warren, one year, 172 days. Michael Doyle, don't worry about him. Ryan Mason of Tottenham fame. So other than Tottenham, he's done Swansea for two years, a year at Luton, and he's then done a year at Rotherham and he's now been unemployed for two years he's obviously made a great impression Ryan Mason then we've got who's Stephen Schumacher he's then come in I mean he seems a reasonable enough coach as a manager he's been manager of Plymouth for two years Sunderland for four years and he's done Luton for not even a year and he's now at Notts County and has been there for the last couple of years he lasted 166 days well he lasted 23 days longer than Ryan Mason and this would have been around the time when the new people came in. So if they came in, I'm assuming they sacked Paul Warren, brought in Ryan Mason. They didn't like what he'd done in the, I mean, what's, what's that? 30, 60, 90, 120, in the five months he was there, or less than five months. They then brought Schumacher in for another five months, didn't like what he'd done. Then Ian Evitt came in for 278 days. He's now at Huddersfield. He'd done Bolton, Barrow as a manager before that. I mean, it seems to be a bit of a type they go for, the former player that's become a manager in the last few seasons. But now that we're... Oh, wow. Now that we've... Omar Shimogo. I mean, I've never even heard of this guy. So... He's been a manager since 2012, so for the last 10 years. So he's at Montelimar, UMS Montelimar. I'm not even sure where they are. They're a team in France. The leagues are not even loaded, so no idea what they are. Then he was with Benin. Then Niort, after doing some assistant manager roles. SM Sane. And then Luton. So hardly great pedigree in their managers for Luton. Wow, okay. So let's have a look at the senior squad and we'll see if there's anyone in there that we recognise. So we'll do it by player, uh, by squad. So at the moment, I'm looking at it, I'm like, I have no idea who these are. So... 
22 year old trained at club Blaine Bexfield. Was he there? He might, yeah, so he was there when we were there. We just didn't didn't know he existed, basically. I mean, I don't really know what he's going to bring to this team. That is a really poor standard. So looking down, let's find... So Maxim Piscotzi, we know about him. We got him at the club here for £250,000. He's spent every season out on loan by the looks of it. So it doesn't look like he's really going to make it at the club. Now, Brandon Williams. Okay, so we know him. I brought him to the club on a free transfer, and he stayed. He, I mean, he's been a regular starter for them. He's he's done okay, I suppose, hasn't he? He doesn't score goals. He, I mean, that season there is probably his best season. Well, it is his best season. Seven assists, two player of the match awards, and a seven point oh three, and that was in the championship. So you're probably getting a gist of what kind of level he does belong at really so where was he that was here Joe Johnson here we go so he's wanted by Sheffield Wednesday and Salford he's been made available for the under 21s even though he's 24 years old so we look at him he's not really I mean we can't see their um, their star ratings but he doesn't really seem to have progressed. So if we look at it here, we would have been with him here, where he made nine starts for or nine appearances for us, getting two assists. He's not played a single game for Luton in the five years that I've been gone. He's gone to Wimbledon and done okay on loan in League One. He's then gone to Wrexham and done okay on loan in League One. But yeah, they've not really given him a chance, which is a real shame because he was two-star current ability, five-star potential. I really think there's room to actually grow this player. Tyler Moore, I know Tyler Moore. He weren't one of our players, but I know him. Oh, actually, no, tell me, what? Well, no, that weren't us, was it? No, I, I can't remember where I know him from, but I know him from, from FM24 as well. But I'm not sure where I know him from. But yeah... They, they got him in. So they would have bought in, it would have been in his mid-twenties at the time. So let's carry on looking down of anyone we know. I mean, wow, this is, this is quite something. And that's it. Literally like Brandon Williams, Joe Johnson, and Pascotzi are literally the only players we know five years later. That is shocking. So if we have a look, let's type in the names of these players. Corley Money was one of them. So here he is, 21 years old. Oh, go away. 21 years old. Again, he doesn't look like he's been... I mean, look there. Six years he's been at the club. He's not made an appearance. What's his history? He's not even gone out on loan. He's 21 years old now. And they've not even sent him out on loan. They've just kept him here in the under 21s. And where's he gone? Come back. Corley money. Yeah, 21 years old. And mm, I'm disappointed he's not gone out on loan to somebody to try and get some sort of experience because that's what you usually do with a player like that. Um, the next one is Kieran Byron. Here he is. Oh, so oh, so he's at Bolton on loan at the moment. Okay, so at least he's gone out on loan. Let's have a look at his history. So it's only been this season. He's been sitting around doing nothing before that. But he's gone out on loan to Bolton in League One. 11 appearances, one goal for a 6.59. He's a striker. Again, he just doesn't really look like... I mean, he's, he can do both feet. You know, very strong left foot, very strong right foot. Again, it's... That's really disappointing. Really, really disappointing. So the next one we have is Christopher Hill. I'm going to put in Christopher Hill because you probably won't recognise just Hill. Well, it will, but it'll be a whole load of names. So he was 15 in the game. He's now 20 years old. Again, he doesn't... I mean, his physicals are pretty good. He's not, though, gone out on loan to anybody either. So I think it's safe to say that 
FM24 is not developing young players in terms of the AI anyway, because why would you not be sending these players out on loan? Then we get to next, like this was my favourite one, James Hilton. So he was 16 in the game and he was five foot, uh, sorry, six foot four then. So he's not grown an inch in five years. From the age of 16 to 21, he's not grown an inch. I think that might be something football manager needs to work on because you can't just bring someone in at 16 years old, they're six foot. I mean, in theory, he should be like seven foot. But again, he doesn't seem to have developed. By the looks of it, he's not gone out on loan either. He's not played a second of football for the senior team. I mean, if we look at his performances for the under-21s, he doesn't really look like he's setting the world on fire. But again, so that's all four of the three and a half to five star potential talent. I mean, his value is 2.3 to 7 million. And they don't even think it's worthwhile giving him any game time. For, like for Kieran Bryan, that is. I am shocked. And I'm so disappointed as well. If we go back to the Luton Town squad, I just want to have a look at the age profile of the first team. So senior squad. <clears throat> Let's filter it by age. Mm, I mean, I suppose there's not an overabundance of... 30 pluses in there. We don't seem to have any. I mean, they've got Kalechi and Acho. Is he on loan? Yeah, he's on loan from Fenerbahce. <clears throat> so, but again, he's got. So he's got 11 goals in. I mean, 15 starts, 17 substitute appearances. Kind of feel like they should have probably been playing him a bit more. So if we go back to the Premier League and we look at. Let's go start off with, say, Arsenal. Let's have a look at their senior squad. There's quite a few 30-year-olds in there. I mean, bearing in mind, Arsenal don't do 30-year-old players in real life. But they've still got Zinchenko, Jesus, White, Ramsdale, Odegaard. Inketi is still there. Havertz. I mean, I'm kind of thinking if you used to do an Arsenal save yourself, some of these would have been moved on. Not all of them, because there's some really good players there, but I can't see Eddie Nketiah staying. You know, he's, he's on loan at Brentford, where he's got five goals in 14 games, but he's been playing for him before that, though. So let's go now down to Aston Villa. I mean, there you go, you've got two 30s. I mean, OK, one of them's a goalkeeper. It'll be interesting to see if we was to go forward, I mean, not going to, because tomorrow is the start of their new series, but... It'd be interesting to see if we went another five years in the future, how many of these would have changed because it does seem to me as though they're still hanging on. Look, I mean, look, you've got James Ward Prowse at 35 years old and he's still playing pretty much every game. David Ray is a goalkeeper, that's fair enough. Ivan Tony at 34 years old, five goals in 21 appearances. Carl Walker Peters. Yeah, it's. This isn't giving me confidence. I mean, this isn't too bad. Brighton and Hove Albion. One of them's a goalkeeper, obviously. Stupinion's still there. But again, 32 years old, he's made 52 appearances. And I know you will get the odd one or two that will still do that in real life as well. I mean, Edison. Edison is at Chelsea. When did he leave Man City? So he left Man City. So. Manchester City played him in the 2028-29 season. He then didn't get a minute in this in the 29-30 season. Oh no, he's moved on loan to Chelsea for that season. Okay, that's fair enough. I so I thought we're gonna to have to check his injury record because surely. But again, you look at um Edison, I mean, even at 36, he is a bomb goalkeeper, he really is. Okay. So look at Everton. Again, they've got quite a few players. Jordan Pitford's fair enough. Ollie Watkins at 34 has made 56 appearances. James Madison's 33. He's not made many appearances, though. So do they struggle to move players on? Kurt Zuma at 35 is at Fulham. 
there does seem to be quite a few 30 plus players still hanging around and in a lot of cases still making a hell of a lot of appearances. So I just want to go to Man City, sorry, Man City a minute because who have they got as their goalkeeper now? So Anatoly Trubin. So they're going for Anatoly Trubin over Edison. He's a 28-year-old Ukrainian. And maybe that is a sign of the games bringing in younger players and whatever else. You've then got Spike Britz, who's an English... So he must be a regen, this guy, because we've not got his picture in the game. Six foot three. I mean, he looks like a pretty decent goalkeeper, to be honest. He started off at AFC Wimbledon. I know, he was in the game beforehand. So he was at AFC Wimbledon. Man City then bought him for £450,000. And he's now... His value has not gone up greatly, but if they were to play him... Because, yeah, he's not really getting much by way of game time. I mean, he actually spent a season on loan at Tottenham, made 18 appearances. You know, all this sort of stuff fascinates me when you look back over time in Football Manager to see what's happened. So Manchester United, let's have a look at their age profile. Again, they've got some old players. Bruno Fernandes is still there. Marcus Rashford at 32. Lissandro Martinez. Cooper Mine is such a good player on this game, he really is. If you're playing Football Manager and you want to get yourself a quality midfielder that can do just about any central role, you've got to get yourself Cooper Miners. I've bought him in a Manchester City save that I'm doing off camera. And he is great. He really is. What have they got in terms of youth in the club? So you've got Luke Warrington. He's obviously a regen. Wow, 18 years old. I mean, look at that. 17 finishing at 18 years of age. He's played for the club as well. So he's not scored for Manchester City, uh, for Manchester United, but he did score when he went out on loan to United. I mean... If you get him come through in your game, you'd be very happy with that because he's got the physicals that you can improve. You can improve the mentals and the technicals. He he can do both feet pretty much. Yeah, I think you'd be delighted with a player like that come through your youth intake. So let's just have a quick scroll through, see if there's anyone that takes our interest. What have Tottenham got? So in terms of their age profile... They've still got quite a few in it. And they've got Lucas Torreira there, former Arsenal player. Joji Manderson, Basuma is still there. Vicar Vicario, sorry, is still there. Romero. Dest I love that name, Destiny Doggy. I love it, I really do. Um, in terms of youth, they've not really got a great deal for youth. They've got a 20-year-old who's their youngest. Is he a reg? Yeah, it must be a reg. He's only 20. 63 to 188 million pounds. I mean, that is madness. He's not even played for them. Well, he has two appearances in two years. They bought him from Dynamo at, for 16 and a half million. And he's now worth that. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's, he's a good goalkeeper. He can use both feet as well. But he's not amazing. That is insane. But again, it's not someone they've brought through. It's someone that's, that they've brought into the team. So Clyde Melligan. Again, not someone they've... Oh, actually, no, it might be someone they've brought through. So yeah, one, one of their own players. He's made three appearances for them four years ago. He's then gone out on loan to Notts County, Hull, Hibernian. Okay, that's fascinating. Okay, so let's get on to the World Cup. And we'll have a quick look at that before we end the video because I'm conscious this is getting a bit long now. So past winners of the World Cup, I don't know how many there would have been, but only one. There's actually a World Cup this year. But the one in 2026 for the three host nations was won by Croatia. Netherlands so close to getting a World Cup. They've never won the World Cup the Netherlands. I'm just checking my facts. No, they haven't. But they have been beaten finalists a few times and beaten finalists again. Austria getting third. That's interesting. If we have a look at the Euros, no, that's not going to show us. So we do European. 
European Football Championship. So Italy are the holders of this. So they have won in 2024, which France beat England in the final. Nobody came third. That's quite interesting that no one's come third in, in all these years. I'm sure they do a third place playoff. So that was the one in Germany, the one that's coming up next year as we are in real life. Then Italy beat England. I mean, England are just always the bridesmaids, aren't they? They've never won the Euros, but they've been beaten in the, in the last three of them. And this was the one that was held in Scotland and Wales. It was held, okay. Wow, okay. So England not doing great. So that's pretty much it. That's, I think we'll leave the video there. I think we've had a good look through, a good nosy through to see what's going on. And thank you very much for watching the Luton Town Let's Play series. And for all the support you've given on it with your views, your likes, your comments, all that sort of stuff, massively appreciated. Please continue to like the videos. Please continue to leave comments, to subscribe, turn your notifications on. A reminder that Bottoms Up starts tomorrow. It's going to be Monday to Friday, every day at 6pm. And we're going to have such... I know now who we are going to be managing because I, a couple of days ago I did do the random number generator recording where I selected the club that I'm with. And I'm excited by it and I think you guys are going to like it as well. It's a different club, let's put it that way. But it's a good club. It's a good fun club. So thank you for watching, folks. I'll see you tomorrow for the start of FM24's full release in Bottoms Up. Music